south, I'm gonna have myself a time. Friendly faces everywhere, humble folks without temptation. When people think of South Park games, they probably think of Obsidian Entertainment, Stick of Truth, or Ubisoft's The Fractured Butthole. <laughs> <laughs> but few people would probably remember the first South Park game ever made, which is aptly named just South Park. First person shooter released way back in 1998. The game originally got released on three platforms. Firstly, it was on the Nintendo 64, and this was released in 1998. But after that, it also got released on the PlayStation 1 and the PC later in 1999. Out of the console versions, the Nintendo 64 one is definitely the best. It just looks better, it runs better, and it just controls better. It's pretty staggering seeing the difference between both of these versions, and the PlayStation 1 just looks terrible by comparison. It's got pre-rendered cinematics instead of using the in-game engine. There's less enemies overall, and you can just tell by looking at it that it's had a massive downgrade. Development for this version was handled by Appaloosa Interactive, who also developed Jaws Unleashed for the PlayStation 2, which should really tell you all you need to know. About the only benefit it has is that you get to keep all of your weapons across each of the game's five episodes, whereas in the other versions, they take them away from you. In terms of the response from Critic, the PlayStation 1 version got scores as low as 1 out of 10. The PC version got a 4 out of 10 from GameSpot. The Nintendo 64 version did score a little bit better with 6s and 7s, but still, it's nothing to write home about. It's a game that's at fault more for just a lack of variety than anything else. Like hearing the same song looping over and over each level, or the same three or four taunts spewed out by the main characters every time you kill something. Or just killing the same looking enemies for the 50th time. Now the PC version obviously looks the best, and you get the benefit of using a mouse and keyboard, which makes aiming a lot easier. But this version is just outright broken, or bugged or something because the enemies in this version take twice as many hits before dying compared to the consoles. On the PlayStation version, for instance, a cow dies from two dodgeball hits. On the PC, it's four. So not only are there more enemies on this version, but they also have more health points. Brilliant. On top of that, the music bugs out and doesn't loop after it finishes, but that might actually be a blessing in disguise. It also lacks any manual save points, so like the consoles, you've got to start from the beginning of the level if you die. Yeah, hope you like replaying 20 minute levels over and over, asshole. Seeing as the Nintendo 64 and the PC version are the closest, and in the Nintendo 64 version you don't have enemies with double the health points, I think it makes it the best choice. I don't know how they screwed up this PC port so badly, it's just like someone completely overlooked it. But because of the ease of capturing footage from this thing, it's going to be the version I'm going to take a look at the most in this video. We'll talk about its problems later on. Now, the Nintendo 64 and the PC version were developed by Iguana Entertainment, known for making the Turok games. And it shouldn't be all that much of a surprise when you start playing it and realize it's running on the same engine. It's got that very similar draw distance fog, the same screen sway when you're moving around, and the same animation for climbing ladders. Weapons are at least kinda neat. You've got a never-ending supply of snowballs, which you can piss on with a never-ending supply of piss for extra damage. Kinda weapon that makes the postal dude green with envy. Or is that yellow with envy? Hey guys, these clowns are easy. After that, you've got dodgeballs. Lots of dodgeballs. These things bounce around, and the alternate fire mode throws them a lot harder, which I guess does more damage. Thirdly, you've got a toilet plunger launcher, which is kinda creative. This one does decent damage, and the plungers will even stick to enemies, allowing you to pick them up afterwards if you're quick. And the alternate fire for this thing fires out three plungers at once. The fourth weapon is a foam dart gun, which is fast firing and pretty useful. Though ammo for this thing is pretty rare, so you don't get to use it all that often. Your fifth weapon is a Terence and Philip doll, which gets thrown out like a grenade, exploding and leaving behind a poisonous fart gas cloud. And this thing is really useful against bosses. Oh. Oh. The cow launcher is like the rocket launcher, just instead of launching rockets, it launches cows. And again, it leaves behind a poisonous fart gas cloud. I don't know, I guess because farts are funny? Um, you know what? Yeah, fair play. They are funny. The last few weapons are kind of interesting. Firstly, you've got the Warpo Ray, which has a few different fire modes. One that launches out piranhas, then a yellow and a purple colored ray, both of which do more damage. On the PlayStation version, this thing is so overpowered and it can kill most enemies in a single hit. <laughs> Lastly, you've got a sniper chicken, which shoots high precision eggs out of its ass. You only come across this weapon near the end of the game, but it's pretty damn useful when it finally appears. 
All these weapons are spread out across the story mode, and the only thing that pisses me off is how the game takes them away from you at the end of each episode. So you're back to square one every single time, aside from the PlayStation 1 version, which lets you keep them for some reason. Other than that, you eat cheesy poos to get your health back, and you drink soda for power-ups. <laughs> Speaking of the story, it's based loosely off a few episodes from the first couple of seasons of the show, which, funnily enough, is the only seasons I've ever actually watched in its entirety. Damn it, when the hell is this gonna stop? First episode, you're up against rabid turkeys. The second one, you're up against evil clones. The third one, you're up against mad cows and aliens. Fourth one is evil robots, and the final one is evil toys. All of these always ending in some kind of boss fight. First level starts off and you gotta find all your friends and get to Chef's Love Shack, heading through the nearby Renaissance Fair which happens to be under attack by those damn dirty turkeys. This whole level is just flooded with these things and you'll start to see a mechanic that gets reused throughout the entire game, where you'll have to kill every enemy in the area to unlock a nearby door so you can progress onward. After removing a few dozen turkeys from the gene pool, you finally find Chef's Love Shack where we see some lady in his bed who looks like she's in some kind of serious pain. Anyway, Chef says that you need to try and track the turkeys back to their source and also gives you a hint on how to deal with some upcoming enemies. In the second level, you'll see what he's talking about, and this is yet another mechanic that gets reused throughout the entire game with other tank enemies. These are just bigger variants of the standard enemies, but they're able to spawn in the weaker ones endlessly. And on the PC, the tanks take a shitload of damage before dying, which just becomes super annoying. After this, you come across Chef yet again, and he says your only way to stop the turkeys is to find their secret turkey lair. This next level, though, honestly goes on for 15 or so minutes. It's just relentless, boring, and more of the same. Taking out waves of the standard turkeys and a couple of dozen of the tanks along the way. Now I know that this was designed primarily for the consoles, but the environments are so barren and lacking any detail or notable architecture. You just feel like you're moving through this digital intestinal tract or something, weaving your way through the level like a metaphorical turd. Eventually on this level, you'll find the foam dart gun and the toilet plunger gun. And for the brief amount of time you get to use these, the combat ain't all that bad. When you finally reach the end, you've got to fight against the head turkey. It's only weak spot being its ass, which has a blatant bullseye on it. Then after you give it the kind of ass pounding that your mum would be proud of, the level ends. Oh my god! They killed Kenny! You bastard! I should say too that if you let any of the tanks get past you throughout the levels, at the end of the level, you'll then find yourself back in South Park having to defend all the buildings from these things before they can destroy the town. If you don't do this in time, you fail the entire level and have to go all the way back to the start of the previous one. Yeah, sucks. What it means is that there's no point trying to run past the tanks in this game because you're just gonna have to kill everything anyway. After this, there's a cinematic and the guys say that they have to get home for Thanksgiving dinner and to watch Terence and Philip. But the head turkey shows up again, still alive. This time though, it's got a lot more health points and it farts out these projectiles that do some serious damage. I'll say too that on the consoles, this level was an absolute nightmare because of how many hills there are along the way, making aiming a real bitch. After enough punishment is delivered to this thing's gigantic, dummy thick ass, it finally dies and the episode is over. One down, four to go. <laughs> I'm not even taking back. You son of a bitch, I kick you in the nuts. Chef tells you that the town still isn't safe though, so now instead of fighting mutant turkeys, you're now fighting mutant clones. Mentally disabled clones too, no less. Nobody tell Kotaku. So you head back to the town to clean things up. Again, like the turkeys, you've got a standard clone and a tank clone. The tank clone, of course, being able to spawn in more of the standard clones as much as it wants. The difference is the clones move a lot slower than the turkeys, but they can now also throw snowballs at the player. Otherwise, their tactics consist of just running right towards you and zigzagging along the way to make themselves harder to hit. Next up, you're clearing out a bunch of warehouses, killing dozens more clones before the guys come across this kind of alien device, which is kind of setting up what happens in the next episode. At this point, you also come across the Terrence and Philip dolls and the cow launcher. Uh, for the final level in this chapter, it's a boss fight against the mother clone at the nearby museum. Hopefully finding the Mr. Hanky power-up along the way, which helps you out and damages enemies. Yeah, you're literally protected by a piece of shit. And you're gonna need it because this whole boss fight just sucks. 
It almost made me want to just quit the game and never play it again, and it's easily the worst part of the game so far. It's easily one of the worst things ever designed by another human being, aside from Anthrax. This thing sucks for a few reasons. For starters, it takes like a billion hits before it dies, and its weak spot is a tiny eyeball that's only vulnerable for a very limited window. Aside from that, it also spawns in clones, three at a time, constantly, which you're always having to deal with. A lot of the time, too, the eye clips right through you, so you can't even hit it, and the boss doesn't even really telegraph this attack, so you can barely tell it's coming, it's almost instant. You know when you're so angry at something in a video game that you only want to beat it at that point, just out of spite, so the game doesn't win? Yeah, that's how this whole boss fight made me feel. Hey, stupid, you want a piece of me? What's interesting is that in the PlayStation 1 version, this boss is an absolute pushover and he dies in a few hits. It just shows another way in how vastly different and inconsistent all of these versions are. On the Nintendo 64, the fight is somewhat less cancerous because at least the boss takes less damage to beat. But whoever thought it was a good idea for a boss fight against something with a weak spot the size of a pinhole, you can just go and get a colonoscopy with a cactus. Metaphorically speaking, that is. Thankfully though, once you kill this bitch, the chapter is done. There's no more clones to fight. Though I think that sound they make is actually burned into my brain at this point. Sadly though, things do not improve from here on in, and now we're really up shit creek. Everything that happens for the remainder of the campaign only exists to hurt you. For the third episode, we're now taking on cows and aliens, kind of mirroring the first episode of the first season of the show. The cows are the first enemies you'll encounter though, and you'll notice pretty much right away how they take heaps of damage before they die. To make it even worse, you can't even really outrun them, and every time one of them hits you, you get knocked into the air like some kind of schoolboy sized hacky sack. The cows attack you in droves too, and there's not even really any point to killing them because the alien ships are gonna keep spawning them in, which is this episode's version of the tanks. So instead, you have to take out the alien ships, but lo and behold, like everything else in this game, they take like a bazillion hits before going down. <laughs> On a positive note, in this episode, we finally get the Warpo Ray, but ammo is so stingy that again, you don't get to use it all that often. I mean, what is this game's problem with giving the player ammo? I mean, fuck! First level, you're just moving around more familiar looking mountains, killing cows and destroying alien ships. And this whole thing felt so menial. It was about as much fun as sitting in traffic. In fact, I'd probably rather sit in traffic than play this. Or use a shoestring to floss out my pee hole. Anyway, after a couple of levels of this, you've reached the alien mothership. But you've got to fight your way in first, which just means killing a few dozen aliens that just keep spawning in. And I'm not kidding when I say this bit goes on for what feels like hours. I thought my game had actually bugged out or something, but no, it just goes on that long before it finally ends. And it might be, I think, some of the least fun I've ever had in a first-person shooter. It's even worse on the PlayStation because the fog is so thick that you can barely see ahead of you. You do get the sniper chicken on this level, which functions like a sniper rifle, but that ammo runs out really quickly. Also, precise aiming is kind of tough on the PC because the aliens have very small hitboxes. And there's like a dead zone with the mouse controls, making smooth and precise aiming kind of tricky. And don't even get me started on the console controls. Come back to your planet. Once you're finally in the mothership, you've got to fight your way through a bunch of rooms where they're oddly and thankfully generous with ammo for once. But it's ruined yet again with a boss fight against a giant glowing ball sack, which is supposed to be the ship's core, and this thing can take more hits than Jake LaMotta. <laughs> this was the moment when I just stopped caring, because again, this thing is pretty much broken on the PC. But again, compare this to the console version, it's like chalk and cheese. <laughs> Fourth episode, you're up against the evil robots, tracking them back to a nearby factory and destroying the machines producing them. I gotta say though, this episode is okay. I still find it super annoying how you get knocked back when the robots hit you. And it's still that same old bullshit of dealing with tanks who keep constantly spawning in more enemies to deal with. But they are pretty generous with the warp array and the sniper chicken ammo, so it's not as terrible as it could have been. The boss fight for this episode is Mr. Hat, who's inside one of the tank robots. You can only damage him when he pops up the lid for a second or so. Or if you've got a bunch of the Terrence and Philip dolls, you can just suffocate him with the fart gas. It's like he's trapped in his very own Dutch oven. It's my turn to kick their ass. 
This whole episode, even though it still kind of sucks, was like coming up from swimming in a sea of shit and being able to have one last gasp of somewhat fresh air before being pulled back down by the current and drowning. Because I hate to say it, but they saved the absolute worst for last. And at this point, I'm 100% convinced that whoever worked on the PC port for the game just either didn't care or never even bothered to playtest this. Because the last couple of levels are nearly impossible to beat on the PC. This episode, you're taking on those evil robots. You've got army tanks, Linda Blair dolls that vomit acid on you, and toy planes that fly around and dive bomb. The first level of this episode, though, it ain't too bad. You get a heap of ammo for your weapons, and there's lots of room to maneuver around and avoid the enemies. The only thing is that this level just goes on and on. It's easily one of the longest levels in the entire game. What comes next, though, is the worst this game has to offer. For the second level, you're moving through a car park trying to reach a toy store, and this is the gauntlet to end all gauntlets. It starts off simple enough with just a couple of tanks and the dolls throwing up on you, and what a perfect metaphor for the game at this point. But then aside from that, you're also dealing with a bunch of jack-in-the-boxes. The annoying tank enemies who can spawn in up to three toys at a time. And there is just simply not enough ammo to deal with these things. And this is where I said that I don't think anyone bothered to playtest this on the PC version. If you even manage to make it to the toy store, you'll be bombarded with another dozen or so jack-in-the-boxes, which you have to kill before the door opens to the toy store. And I've got better things to do with my time than spend an hour pelting all of these enemies with snowballs, like mowing my lawn and drinking monster energy drinks. If you've ever wanted to see the height of shoddy PC ports and developers just not caring, well, this is it. And finally, I realized there's a reason why there's no videos on YouTube of someone actually beating this game. I mean, there's videos for the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 version, but not for this. You know why? Because it cannot be done. But we're too far into this thing to turn back now, so I put on God Mode and Infinite Ammo just to see the final boss. I didn't really want to continue, but look, I'm a nice guy and I like you. And I feel like we've all really connected over this video, so we need to see this thing to the end. Versus the f***ing turkeys and the asshole clones and aliens, I'm sick of all this! Whoa dude, calm down. Alright, for the final fight, you're taken on Ultra Mega Mega Man. And no surprise, there's pretty much no ammo for any of your weapons in the arena that you take him on. The proof of just how bad this fight is, is that even when I had infinite ammo and spammed this guy with the Terrence and Philip dolls, it still took like two or so minutes of constant spamming before he finally died. I mean, if this isn't enough proof to show how broken this game is, well, paint my balls purple and call me Susan. But finally, the game's come to an end. Thank God. Oh my God, they killed Kenny. And if you're one of the few people who claims to have beaten this thing on the PC, well, I'd love to hear from you. Mostly so I can call you a filthy liar and date your sister. When I started reading about this game online preparing for this video, I noticed a lot of people talking more about the console versions over the PC, and also more the multiplayer component than the story. And South Park had a surprisingly large multiplayer mode with 16 maps and 20 characters to play as on the consoles. It even had a unique weapon that would make the other players dance. It seemed that console shooters from that era often had a lot of effort put into their multiplayer modes. And on the PC, if you know a bunch of people who still have working copies of the game, well, you could probably get them to play it with you. I'm sure you'd get a lot more fun out of that than the campaign, that's for sure. South Park overall is a weird game. It was made at a time when the series was still in its infancy, so it doesn't have all that much material to pull things from. But it also just doesn't do anything all that well to begin with. You've really got to make it clear which version you're talking about when critiquing it because they've each got their own negative points. The PlayStation 1 version looks horrible but is somehow the easiest. The Nintendo 64 version looks better but is trickier to play because of the control scheme. And the PC version looks the best but it plays the worst because of the broken enemy health points. If I had to recommend a version to play, I'd probably say the Nintendo 64, but that's like recommending someone eating a plate of dog turds instead of a plate of cat turds. Dog or cat, you're still eating a turd. I'm gonna stick you in. Honestly, there's just no reason to play it, and I actually regret going back and replaying this thing. I had really fond memories of it on the PlayStation 1, but playing it now again in 2019, it's aged so horribly that it actually made me kind of depressed. Somebody's making brownies. <laughs> It'd be like seeing that hot girl that you had a crush on in your high school when you're both now in your early 30s. Only now she's got three kids, a mortgage, and wears unwashed active wear to the supermarket. 
The Stick of Truth and Fractured Butthole are far better South Park games. They're more refined in the gameplay aspect and able to draw from 20 or so seasons of the show's lore and storylines. They just rendered this old, sad first person shooter obsolete. Ooh. When the novelty wears off, you realize you're playing a horde shooter with a very limited lineup of enemies and weapons, combined with repetitive and boring level design. On any level, regardless of what it's based off, that's not a good thing. But hey, try to find me another game that lets you throw piss-covered snowballs at brain-dead clones. I dare you.